Did that Dolby B button on your cassette deck ever work? This is one of the great puzzles of audio. Why did just about every hi-fi cassette deck have a Dolby switch or button when clearly it didn't work? Well, it did sort of work if you left it switched off. Do that and that pre-recorded cassette that you bought from Woolworths would sound wonderful. Switch it in and the sound would be dull. No treble, HF, high frequency, whatever you want to call it. Now, let's be serious. What I've just described is the majority reaction to the Dolby button or switch. I've met more people who thought it didn't work than people who knew that it did and does, if you still have a cassette deck and you know how to look after it. In fact, more than think it didn't work, most people didn't even know what it was for, which of course, as we professionals, audiophiles and hi-fi enthusiasts know, is noise reduction. The cassette format which was never intended for high quality reproduction, is noisy, very noisy. The various Dolby noise reduction systems reduce noise. Noise reduction reduces noise. Dolby B is the noise reduction system used in cassette decks, but it isn't called Dolby B, it's called Type B or B Type. I know that because Ray Dolby himself told me that. Ray Dolby, inventor of the video recorder, the video recorder, and of course, Dolby noise reduction. So. Type B. It's called Type B or B Type because there's a Type A or A Type. Type A is for professional use and was massively expensive. I can't remember exactly how much, so perhaps someone with a better memory than me can tell us in the comments. But expensive? Yes, I used Type A professionally, and when I bought my own Revox PR99 in 1983 for a thousand pounds, I definitely couldn't afford Dolby on top. So I'm guessing maybe a thousand pounds a channel. Type B, fortunately, is much cheaper. If my technical assistant tells you a little about how Type A worked, then it'll be easier to understand Type B. Here are some key facts. Recording an instrument such as a piano or violin does not usefully load the tape over the whole audio spectrum, and thus high frequency noises are noticeable during reproduction. Type A splits the frequency spectrum into four bands, each band being processed separately. High-level signals are not processed because they already mask any noise. Low-level signals are boosted before recording by about 10 decibels. On playback, low-level signals are lowered by 10 decibels. This brings the wanted signal back to its original level and at the same time lowers the level of the noise also by 10 decibels. The two highest bands extend all the way to 20 kHz, thus stacking their effect and providing up to 15 decibels of noise reduction at higher frequencies. So to summarize, low level signals are boosted before recording and lowered on playback. This lowers the level of the noise generated in the recording process. Now, how does Type B differ? Well, there's only one band of processing. This is set to work at higher frequencies because that's when noise is more noticeable. Also, the band slides according to where it's needed. If there's a lot of high frequency energy in the signal from moment to moment, then the noise will be masked anyway. So the band slides out of the way. If the overall level or high frequency level is low, then the band slides down to a point where noise reduction starts at around 300 Hz and achieves 10 decibels of noise reduction at 4 kHz and above. So that's the theory. It kind of sounds as though it should work, shouldn't it? There will be no alterations of frequency response, phase response, or transient response. In other words, the system will be a truly complementary one which preserves the integrity of the signal. The noise reduction system as described produces an effective noise reduction of 9 dB when measuring cassette noise according to the DIN 45405 noise weighting characteristic. Well, here's where the problem lies. All of the Dolby noise reduction systems are sensitive to level. It's absolutely key that high level signals are not processed because that's where you'd hear any inaccuracies most easily. So there's a level where there's a transition from not processed to processed. This is where things can go wrong. Suppose, for instance, that you were suddenly inspired to record a 1 kHz tone on your cassette deck at 0 VU without noise reduction. Then you play it back and the meter reads minus 2 VU. It's a bit less, but this is actually within the tolerance of Dolby, such that most listeners won't hear anything wrong. But what if things are worse than that and the meter reads minus 6 VU? Clearly things are going to be worse. And what about higher frequencies? Type B is oriented towards higher frequencies. So what if there was a 10 dB loss up there? 
Well, what's going to happen is that it won't just be noise that's reduced. It's the low level and high frequency signals too. Whoops, the sound is dull. Now, this is exactly what people were complaining about. The sound with Dolby switched in is dull. Switched out and it's nice and bright. And we won't bother about that noise in the background. <laughs> so why this problem? Well, let's imagine you're doing your own recording. Probably copying a friend's record collection because that's what people did back then. If your machine is brand new and you're using the recommended tape type, then everything should be OK. Your playback level should be the same as the record level and the Dolby Noise Reduction System will measure the levels correctly and apply noise reduction as it should. Hooray! Everything is working as intended and your cassette copies sound almost identical to the original vinyl. But what if you change your cassettes to a different brand? Things might not be so OK. Any analogue tape or cassette recorder needs to be aligned to the exact tape that it's using. Manufacturer, brand, type. Get that wrong and there'll be a level difference and a difference in frequency balance. I could go into alignment, but that would be a whole video in itself. TLDR, use the recommended tape. So imagine that you're an average non-technical cassette enthusiast who's just bought a shiny new deck with a Dolby button. You use the recommended tape and you press in the Dolby on record. Keep it in on playback and everything is wonderful. You see, that Dolby button actually does work. You, like I, would have absolutely no hesitation in using it all the time, recording and playback. Everything sounds better, nothing sounds worse. But a year later and everything's just a little dull, even the cassettes you recorded a year ago. Things sound better with Dolby switched out. What went wrong? You didn't clean the heads. Clean the heads, you idiot. <laughs> no, not you. You know this. I know this. Many hi-fi enthusiasts know this. But the vast majority of normal people, people who just love music, either don't know this or they don't realise its importance. To give this a perspective, if you're recording professionally on a professional reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, how often do you clean the heads? every day or even every session. And the heads should already be so clean that you can't see anything coming off on your cotton bud. And this is with professional machines running quarter inch tape at 15 inches per second for stereo. Cassette decks use half the width of one eighth inch tape at just one and seven eighths inches per second. Cassette decks ideally need more cleaning. And don't forget the capstone, pinch roller and tape guides. They need to be clean enough to eat your dinner off, as the expression goes. I could add demagnetising too. OK, demagnetising too. When your deck becomes magnetised, as it will over time, it'll start to demagnetise your tapes. Really, it's not surprising that after a period of real-world use, that Dolby button doesn't do quite what it was supposed to do. I could go on. A common complaint is that cassettes recorded on one machine don't sound so good on another and Dolby exaggerates that effect. Again, it isn't the fault of the Dolby. Cassette decks need to be aligned, which we will presume to have been done correctly at the factory, but things will drift. Head, azimuth, wrap, height, zenith, and of course the electronics in general, and head wear. So two machines that should record and play back interchangeably are not in practice as interchangeable as they should be. Now, my question for you. As I said at the beginning, I've met so many people who really do think that Dolby is better switched out. And whatever I say doesn't make a difference. They will leave Dolby Type B switched out until their dying day. So where do you stand? With me, that Dolby does work if the machine is aligned properly. Or maybe you don't think that Dolby works, however well set up the machine is. Or maybe you were a doubter and now you've changed your mind. Let me know in the comments. See you soon.